Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to rec be recording this as I know um, it's a holiday weekend and I greatly appreciate your time. Um, though we wanted to make sure this was um, presented in a timely fashion as NEPA gives was just hard to believe a month ago uh, this weekend. So we want to thank everybody and um, appreciate all your time and effort put into NEPA gives. Um, and with that, um, just an extra thank you from our uh, team at the foundation to you all who helped and made our goal of at least breaking a million dollars in the economy we're in and the times we're in, we find that a great success of raising a million dollars in 24 hours uh, through 5,000 donors and 212 organizations received donations on that day. So just a quick overview of what we're gonna cover um, during um, this, this quick presentation for you all is how to access your donation reports. Um, so you all probably have been using um, your GiveGab portal um, in preparing your profile and adding peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers um, and all that fun stuff. But after the day, there's a lot of reports and a lot of information that can be utilized when you are beginning to develop a thank you plan um, and then also donor cultivation. So um, with that, we're going to just hit on a couple of ideas of how to maximize your data through some donor segmentation. Um, a little bit, a couple of tips and best practices for gift acknowledgements. Um, so how to strategize it, knowing that the capacity that we all have is limited. And then also just sharing a couple of things in planning for 2023, um, which will, I can't believe it be our fourth annual NEPA gives. Okay. So when you're first talking about what you want to use the, the, the data for that, we're going to go over really quickly and um, show you how to navigate the portal. Um, you want to have a couple ideas in mind of what your, deter what your donor segments are. Um, are, you worried, are you looking at the giving levels of your donors? Are you looking at the entry point and how they came to either um, make the donation on NEPA Gives or um, did they come through a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? Um, did they come through um, Facebook or any other type of entry point that they found your organization in donating? Um, and now, as I mentioned, having three years of data now, um, do you want to go by the giving history to see how donors have given over the last three years and how to maximize um, their giving history or their um, potential for the following year? Um, in that strategy, as I mentioned, you want to create a realistic strategy, um, knowing that all our capacity is um, at the max, especially in the field we all find ourselves in in nonprofit management. So you want to make sure that you are thanking all your donors appropriately, but creating the realistic strategy that you can achieve it by. Um, and then lastly, your thank you goal. So um, when you're thanking your donors, it's great to say thank you and acknowledge their donation and their support, but you also wanna have a goal for them. Um, maybe it's to recruit more board members or to increase your volunteer pool. Um, or to even be more NEPA gift specific and you wanna have a farther peer-to-peer -peer fundraising reach for the following year. Um, so you wanna um, point out your you know, um, organizational champions from this past NEPA gives. So once you develop you know, what you wanna focus on or even if it's just a general thank you, um, you then wanna um, think about these questions that you can find the data in your um, dashboard. And this will allow you to maximize your data and your. Um... What? Will allow you to um, maximize your data along with your time that you're able to commit to. And I apologize, I'm going to. I think, okay, so I think everybody's muted. Um, so these are some of the questions again, um, you know, who increased their giving from year to year? Who was the, new to your organization? Um, did they come through a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? 
Who were your most successful peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers? Who left a personal comment maybe? And then who helped you win a prize if you would? So once you decide, you know, who you're going to focus on, what questions you want to answer, um, this is just an example as we did not want to pull anybody's um, information to share among the, the group. Um, so when you log on to your um, portal, you'll see, as we talked about in the beginning, you want all the green checks that enable your profile to be active. Um, but on the back end, after NEPA gives is over, um, on the left hand side, you'll see um, home, giving days, reports, donations, and financials. Um, so you'll want to scroll down to the donations um, here and you'll hit the donations. And then this page will come up um, and it will, use, it will have the last completed giving day um, as the current screen, but it will include all of them. So you'll have pages and pages of donations for the view that you first get when you just click uh, donations. Um, there's a couple options here. You can scroll down and as you'll see here, um, it will give you all the giving days that you had participated in. Um, so what you'll wanna do is um, click on one if you just wanna segment it that way. Um, you can also, as it says up here, all giving days and community giving sites. Um, you can include that as well. There's also another um, drop down for any donation type. Um, so you'll see here um, online donations, which come through um, the Giving Day system, but it segments it even more to credit card, mobile pay, PayPal, Venmo, bank account. Um, and I'll mention it on the next screen on where those can play a role in um, either segmenting or doing some donor outreach leading up to next NEPA gives or even um, for your organization as a whole. There's also this great little feature here by it has the money sign and I called it out here because if you have a donor that, you know, let's say after Christmas or um, during tax season has lost their receipt or needs a copy of it, um, you can access the donations receipts made to your organization by just clicking on the little um, money um, tab here um, and it will ask you to enter the email and it will send it right over to them. Um, this is useful as I mentioned as some may ask for um, a, donate, um, a donation receipt after. Um, GiveGab, the blue bubble is also able to do that for them as well if you um, you know, don't have the time or if you yourself are looking for um, a receipt for your specific organization, if you will. Then when you receive the giving day um, data that you want, whether it be the date or it be the specific credit card or any donation type, you're gonna scroll to the bottom of your screen and what you're gonna find there is um, the export CSV. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just click on that. It says Audible Campbell. And what that brings up is to your emails, you'll have an email from, Give, from GiveGab um, and it will say donations for the organization that you chose with the time stamped of what you, of what you um, had selected you'll get an email and I pull this email up because it will only be visible for 24 hours, the data that you have here that you can click and download. And what it does is it downloads right into an Excel, into your download file on your computer. Um, but if you, you, know, you download it today and then on Monday you want to go back to it, it's not going to be accessible. You'll have to go back and re-download the CSV. So my suggestion would be just to download it and it's at least in your computer downloads that you can go back to the next um, day, two days, a week or whatnot. So some of the, the um, headings within that CSV file that you will um, have access to and all the information it will be a huge spreadsheet. So you'll want to um, you know, edit it, um, remove some fields that you don't wanna use, um, even, you know, complete a pivot table around year to year, since some of us have participated for three years now, 
um, but you'll have your donor contact, so your traditional first and last name, email address, phone, um, the donation, so you'll have the intended donation, um, the fees covered, total payout, and then donation type. So um, the intended donation is if someone made, intended to make a $125 donation, let's say. Um, if the fees were covered, it will say that, it will say zero, or I think it says either zero or yes. Um, and if they weren't, the total payout will be the total paid out to your um, organization. So if they didn't cover the fees, and let's say they were $1.85 or $2, you would get um, the total payout of $123. Um, I will say that we just reviewed our stats with our GiveGab project manager, and if I'm not mistaken, about 88 to 90 percent of intended donations fees were covered. Um, so most donors that donated on that day did cover the fee. So the, um, the cost to, that's passed on through the donation to the organization should be very low. Um, donation type will give you PayPal, Venmo, Apple Pay. It will give you the donation type, um, which in doing some of my reading through some other giving day blogs, um, and whatnot. This is important as we start moving to, you know, a very digital based Venmo type of um, payment, you could start to segment your donations that way and really try to, as we get closer, really promote that um, option of payment as maybe more, more people find it more secure to donate through Venmo. Retention. Um, this is an important one too, so you all can see how many have donated year after year or if there are any new donors. Um, the new donor, though, is a self-identified um, field when you go through the donation process. So um, some that if they do appear twice with the same name, but say they're a new donor, um, they self-identified that. So they for whatever reason may made, made a donation last year and this year, but identified as a new donor. Um, so it might be worth, you know, um, comparing your donor contact to your retention. Um, so you could either have an anonymous, which there weren't too many of them, um, as GiveGap gives donors the option to remain anonymous to both their organization and to the NEPA Gives campaign as a whole. Um, again, I mentioned the new donor is self-identified. Um, and then there is a refer referral source um, that isn't used greatly yet. And I hope through um, this training and then also including it in next year's that more people will answer that question when they go through uh, their NEPA gives donation. Um, so it does reference Facebook, Google, um, so you're able to get a sense of where the referral came from that they made their donation through. So some may have clicked through their, the Facebook post, some Instagram, um, some may have just Googled NEPA gives because they didn't put the website in, if you would. Um, so you'll be able to segment that way, which may help for marketing purposes. Um, cause areas are the campaigns within a profile. Um, so if you had a specific, um, a specific campaign related to your organization or you had programs that you raised funds for, um, such as, you know, um, smaller like programs, food banks, if you would, um, they'll also have the, um, thought the, the header of campaign. And then lastly, fundraiser is what your peer-to-peer -peer is. So there is a column that has the fundraiser listed and it will have the peer-to-peer -peer name of who they donated through. So again, if you wanna really focus on peer-to-peer -peer next year, you'll be able to see how many donations came through each peer-to-peer -peer, or if they came um, through just a general um, donation made, um, you'll be able to learn that as well. So after you find all this information and you know, you're know you kind of overwhelmed with all the, all the different types of information you can analyze, um, one of the ways that many giving days thank their um, donors or even promote 
um, their strategy for the next year is um, segmenting. So the importance of this is that it's a crucial component of effective donor stewardship. It really identifies what each donor group um, goal is, you know, whether, as I mentioned before, if you want to thank them through engaging them monetarily more, um, effort wise more, if you want a board member, if you're looking for more volunteers, it's a really good way um, to do that. It also allows for personalized customizations. Um, so if you categorize them or segment them, um, you're able to um, reach out to groups as opposed to every single person if the capacity is uh, one of the limitations you have. You're also able to allocate time and resources to donors with the most potential for growth within your organization. So you're identifying what donors can grow your organization in what capacity, whether it be through volunteering, whether it be through um, board members, whether it be through monetary, you're able to um, segment them into those groups that you're able to focus on as a whole, as opposed to each donor, if you would. Um, it also helps you reach your internal goals quickly and easily. As I mentioned, you might have 84 donors, let's say, but if you have segmented them into three or four groups, you now have um, a more reachable goal of focusing on four goals as opposed to 84 donors. And just some general acknowledgement tips, if you would, um, when you are segmenting them, um, if possible. And again, a purpose of segmenting is, let's say, um, any donor who gave, me who gave over $75 is going to get a personalized acknowledgement. So they may have, you know, hybrid it versus dear friend or dear contributor. Um, it also, um, in the acknowledgement, highlight the impact of the donor's contribution. Um, so while you're segmenting them, you know, one of the examples here is that you're identifying what the funds you raised will actually impact. So, you know, this example says, with the dollars raised, we have helped 50 people in need. Um, so maybe you're looking for more contributions to help that particular program, and you've segmented it to people who probably would or who have the uh, means to do so. And then lastly, including additional opportunities to get involved. So um, as I mentioned, if you're looking for more volunteers, maybe your thank you includes join us on Sunday for our summer barbecue jamboree, or maybe you're gonna have a donor, um, a donor event, or you're gonna have a volunteer acknowledgement time. Um, this is a great way to include that in that particular um, acknowledgement for that segment of donors. And then this is just a segmenting example that um, one of the organizations from the example Missoula Gives had put together. Um, they really identified their segmenting by dollars. So they, they divided it from one to 99, 100 to 499, 500 to 999, and then 1,000 and above. Um, and then they even broke down how many donors are in each of those categories. And they did levels of, um, as I mentioned before, they just get a, thank, a general thank you email, um, you know, which everybody gets, and they might get that right after NEPA gives, um, which I will also um, re mention again, that as soon as your don donor makes the donation, um, they will get a thank you. It's, it's auto-generated. It's in your profile as so that you can actually customize it, and many of you have. Um, you know, then the next level gets a personal letter. The next one includes an online acknowledgement and then also a public acknowledgement. Um, so there's different levels. And as you can see, it's doing a public acknowledgement for six donors and not a hundred donors. Um, so as you get higher in the segmenting, your donor focus becomes smaller and probably more manageable for the staff that um, your organization has. So just some tips and highlights um, from the tools that I have given or the tips that I've gathered as I am not an expert. I take all of these from giving days that have long preceded us and give gab who has done an amazing job in running 100 plus giving days annually around the world um, is to create a strategy for acknowledging donors to build stronger relationships. Um, so one of those um, strat strategies is segment segmenting your donors. 
um, take advantage of the reporting tools available in your dashboard. Um, NEPA gives is a 24 hour giving day, but it exists 364 days as well as your dashboard is accessible for you those entire times. So you will be able to um, go back even if it's January, February of next year, that that's your annual drive, or um, as I mentioned, someone's looking for their tax receipt, um, you know, just remember and take advantage of those. Um, also highlighting the donor's impact allows the donor to appreciate the value of their contribution. Um, donors give for a variety of reasons, as we all know. So highlighting their impact on the way that they want their con contribution to be highlighted um, helps for years to come and ensures that they will be um, continued supporters of your organization. And then again, provide more opportunities for them to get involved. Um, you know, there's no such thing as too much gratitude as um, many say that you can thank them multiple times during the years in um, different ways. Um, you know, acknowledging the higher donors publicly and doing a profile on them through your organization's um, newsletter or social media posts. There's, there's many different ways to get um, donors involved. And then save the date. We are excited and um, we, we've made it so that uh, NEPA gives is the first Friday in June. Um, so ideally, you know the, the next five years NEPA gives, if you would. Um, so next year is June 2nd, 2023. Um, as you'll see here up in the right-hand corner, registration um, will begin on the 15th. Um, that is a copy of our office um, calendar that we have internally. So um, one suggestion I have is if you're watching this live, if you're watching this recorded, um, as soon as this is over, stop and put it on your calendar um, as February comes quickly and then June comes even quicker as we did have um, a dozen or so organizations reach out even up to 24 hours before NEPA gives wanting to register. Um, and due to um, some of the checks and balances we have within GiveGab and then enabling you all to make to accept online donations, we do have to close the portal seven days or so ahead of uh, NEPA gives. So um, it pains me when I have to type those emails or um, not accept anybody due to that limitation. So I suggest you just put it on your um, calendar now. Um, if you were able to join us in our gift gathering this year, thank you. Um, we were excited to be able to um, navigate back into the in-person um, events and we look forward to expanding that next year. So we will um, in some capacity have a give gathering celebration. Um, if you would like to complete our 2022 NEPA give survey, um, it was included in the registration for this training, um, though we will also um, put it on our NEPA gives Facebook page. Um, if you have other colleagues or um, people that you would like to include in our mailing list that starts, you know, shortly after this, as we're already planning 2023, uh, feel free to email Frank from our office, and his email is just frank at safdn.org. Um, 2023 will also bring us some more in-person kickoff and registration date networking opportunities. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, we come back to the office on Monday from NEPA Gives and we're already in our minds um, thinking of the following year. So we're hoping to be able to provide some networking opportunities, um, some in-person uh, visual um, help registration, if you would, um, as I know sometimes people need some help uh, walking through the registration process. So those are things we're excited to offer in 2023. Um, and then also the nonprofit hub expansion, hopefully. Um, it, we had a great turnout um, to all the nonprofits that are on here that participated. Thank you. Um, you really understood what our vision was and executed that. We couldn't have done it without you. Um, and we look forward to expanding that um, opportunity that um, provides nonprofits the opportunity to showcase their services to those that come to our gift gathering. We also welcome any ideas and thoughts you may have, um, things you experienced along your last two or three years of participating, if you're a brand new, 
um, feel free to email myself, uh, vw at safdn.org. And um, again, I really appreciate everybody who made it possible to raise um, just over $1.1 million in a time where every dollar counts to every single person in this um, community. So with that, I will leave this slide up um, so that you all can take some of this um, information. And I will also look to um, the chat and I greatly appreciate that one of them was my mutes. I am working from home as my um, children finished school. So I appreciate it, um, Dana and our team. Um, payments have been sent. Um, so some of you may have already received them. Um, we had the process started and were notified by GiveGab on, when, on Tuesday, that Wednesday, they would start being um, sent to the banks. Um, so it just depends on your actual financial institutions if it was to hit, um, you know, Thursday or Friday. Um, the prizes and incentives are paid out separate. We just cut those. Um, so while the donations that came directly through GiveGab were directly deposited into your accounts, the prizes and incentives, which include the match minute donations that were matched, they will be getting a check. You will be getting a check um, from either the Scranton Area Foundation, the Lizard Foundation, or the Wayne County Foundation, depending on who sponsored that um, incentive. Um, so, Vivian, yes. Vivian, I know that we're doing the final audits on our end and okay. um, that they probably won't be cut until next Wednesday. So look for them at the end of next week or the week after that. Okay, great. Thanks, Dana. Um, you know, we worked really hard to make sure the, um, the payouts that you all worked so hard to raise online um, hit before the fiscal year as, you know, it is something we recognize and um, try to mention. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, most we've gotten word, Dana, that some have hit yesterday or today. Um, and again, those prizes and checks will go out after um, in next week. So, um, you know, if you don't receive them in a week, I know sometimes the mail takes a little longer, um, feel free to reach out to myself or Dana if you have any questions with that. And thank you, Chris, for that shout out. We, um, you know, we at the foundation, we don't, um, we don't benefit from this in any way, but helping you all raise the needed funds you need for operational expenses. Um, and it's probably one of the, the greatest in, um, initiatives that I get to be part of. Um, for this foundation. So um, we appreciate everybody for joining us today. Um, again, while it's only a one day giving day, we are available the rest of the year. So if you have questions, um, you know, feel free to email us um, and also look forward to um, having you all register. We'll probably do a very similar registration um, tiered style where, um, you know, the, the beginning of the registration, um, it, it increases gradually as we get closer, um, as it takes more work as we get closer to um, ensure everybody a successful giving day. So if there are no other questions, I'm going to stop the sharing. I'm going to, if I can find the recording. Uh, stop the recording and thank you all. And this will be sent out. If you have any questions as you're navigating that donation report, uh, feel free to reach out or even use the uh, blue chat bubble on nipagives.org. So I hope everybody has um, a great 4th of July holiday and um, we look forward to working with you all again for NEPA Gives 2023.